What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and we're here with the UFC 305 predictions There's no editing for this one. This is a pretty simple video. You know, I don't need to go overboard It's just it's just the picks don't need to be putting up any crazy graphics any subtitles by the way I saw your guys's feedback, which I appreciate I'll take the subtitles out for the next one. I've passed on the message to the editor There'll be no subtitles for the next one uh, but yeah, th those editing style videos probably aren't going to be every video. There may be one, maybe every second video, maybe every third video. I don't know. It's more just about like if I need to get a video out quickly, probably won't have any editing. But if I got time on a video and I want to uh, put a bit more uh, detail into it, I'll give it some editing. I'll send it off to the professionals, you know. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a professional. It's just someone who reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, but no, it's, I'm doing it myself, of course. I, I, don't, I didn't say that. I, I did all the editing myself. Um, but anyway, UFC 305 picks. Drickus Duplessis Israel Adesanya, the dog bender himself. Yeah, let's get into it. Full card, 12 fights. Pretty easy. Should be a good one. Yeah, let's get started. First fight on the card, Stuart Nickel versus Jesus Aguilar. Nickel coming in as the minus 225 favorite. Uh, he should win this fight. He'll be the pick. He's coming off the regional scene, Australian prospect in the flyweight division. Uh, ha have a lot of Has a lot of fights on the eternal scene. Well, not a lot. He's 8-0. No. Uh, but he's fought a couple times on the eternal scene, which is a good promotion in Australia. That's not like when you see one of these weird, like, tough enough or some shit like that or some weird regional like eastern promotion in like russia or like abu dhabi or some shit like that and you're like yeah these guys are getting fed cans like yeah there's some can feeding going on in eternal but a lot of the time there are actually good fighters there are people with the aspirations of making it to the ufc not just guys that are like there's still a lot of journeymen but a lot of them are actually legit fighters um fun fact one of the guys in eternal actually has a win over uh, Gene Silver, or maybe, sorry, maybe, no, he beat the person that has a win over Gene Silver, um, and that guy that beat Gene Silver, that's the only loss on his record, is to a guy fighting an Eternal, so yeah, we've actually got some legit fucking prospects, some legit fighters in that promotion in Australia, and Stuart Nickel is definitely a good fighter as well, has his Aguilar, it's not like he's some prospect, I think he arguably lost his last fight against Mendonca, I think it was a bit of a robbery, uh, he's a short, real stocky guy, KO'd Shannon Ross in like 10 seconds, but who cares, Shannon Ross is a bum, uh, Shannon Ross literally got turned into a fucking edit of chicken, like, of someone slapping chicken on a board, like, that's a ridiculous thing to happen to you, to get KO'd and someone to, ch like, turn it into an edit of you falling onto a chopping board as a slab of chicken, like, that's tough, uh, but yeah, Stuart Nickel is gonna be the pick, I reckon he gets it done, maybe by submission on the ground, Aguilar's been subbed, twice in his career. I'll go with an armbar uh, for for Stuart Nickel. I don't even know if he's ever got an armbar in his life, but I think he gets a finish in front of the in front of the home crowd. Uh, well, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, Song Kanan versus Rick Glenn, or Ricky Glenn. I don't know if it's Ricky or Rick, uh, but I'm going to be picking Song Kanan to get this one done. He's just a better fighter than Rick Glenn, and he doesn't look like a geriatric when he strikes. Uh, dropped in, Gary, beat Rolando Bedoya, uh, he lost to Kevin Gisset, that's not that bad of a look, Rick Glenn also moving up to welterweight, so, uh, you could see some of that lighter man skill, uh, to quote the great, late Lucas Tracy, uh, I mean, he's not dead, he just left, um, but no, Lucas Tracy, you know, he loves talking about the lighter man skill, I could see Rick Glenn being a bit quicker, but Son canan has got all the power, I think he's got all the athleticism, Rick Glenn looks like a fucking geriatric, uh, old man, strikes like a fucking... 70 year old so yeah i'll pick canan to win by tko i think he gets it done here uh let's move weird fight to be on this card though neither of them are australian i guess canan's chinese um but yeah neither of these guys are australian new zealand even from oceania at all so weird fight to have on the card but similar to uh if you remember the 293 card had nazrat hakparast versus landon quinones who is a uh moroccan versus an american in quinones like or uh, Mexico, whatever, one of them ones, um, but yeah, we, sometimes they just get some weird fights added, it's really unfortunate we missed out on, like, getting the, the Jack Dellers, or the Robert Whittakers, or the Volks, I mean, I'm not that sad that Volks on there, because that would probably be too quick, and he probably would have got KO'd, uh, but, like, Della, Whittaker, it's really unfortunate that we can't get some of those guys on there, but, yeah, it's a pretty solid guard overall, uh, anyway, let's move on, though, to the next fight, next up, we got Tom Nolan versus Alex Reyes, Tom Nolan, you can't trust this man's chin at all, he got dropped and finished by, uh, 
We've seen them Nicolas Motta in his debut, and then even in his last win against Victor Martinez, got wobbled bad and all kind of like half dropped against Martinez, which is a terrible look because Martinez is a bum. So I really don't trust this guy's chin. I think he should move up to welterweight, to be honest. He seems like one of them ones where he's killing himself to make lightweight. He's like six foot three, and that's why I do think he's going to win this fight because he's just way bigger than Reyes, but there is no chance I'm adding this dude to any parlays or betting him. Even, I mean, you could bet him by just KO or first round KO, but that's going to be the only way you get value on this because, yeah, I'm not fucking betting on a minus 1,000 who got wobbled by Victor Martinez and finished by Nicolas Mota. Um, he's got the potential to be good, but his defense is terrible. His range management sucks. His offense is great, but he put all his stats into offense. So, yeah, don't trust him not to get caught. Uh, but obviously, it would be stupid to pick Alex Reyes, who's 37 and has fought like once this decade. Uh, but also, Alex Reyes fought more recently than Stipe. So yeah, that just goes to show uh, how Stipe shouldn't be getting a title shot. But Alex Reyes, yeah, he's fought once in the last fucking decade. Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up on the card, Jack Jenkins versus Herbert Burns. It's another layup. I uh, actually did the setup for this like PowerPoint a couple days ago, so the odds have gotten a lot wider for some of the fights. I think Herbert Burns is over plus 500 by now. But yeah, you just can't be picking Herbert Burns. Uh, it looks like the fucking featherweight version of Alistair Overeem, except he's just got none of the offensive potential. He's just got a few submissions, and that's about it. He's dangerous for about three minutes, and then uh, he turns into literally a punching bag. Uh, but I'll pick Jack Jenkins. He's real good. I thought he arguably lost to Jamal Emmers, is what it is. Jamal Emmers then went on to get carried by Nate Landwehr, which is unfortunate. Um, but no, I still think Jenkins is real good. He was competitive with Chepe, uh, doing more damage on the feet, just kind of getting out grappled a bit until he broke his arm. Very incidental kind of like fluky injury there. Jenkins won his debut, of course, in the Perth card uh, back at 284. He's returning to Perth, should look good here, should have a good performance. And yeah, I'm picking round two TK. That's a pretty safe bet with any Herbert Burns fight. If he gets it done in round one, like the first person to, I don't know who's done it, someone probably has, but like if you finish Herbert Burns in round one, that's actually really impressive because normally Herbert Burns will stay alive and be problems for like three minutes and then he'll fall off a cliff and die like he did against Bill Aljo or against uh, his last opponent, Julio Arce. Like he's not all that, in my opinion, Herbert Burns. Uh, I mean, that's not a hot take. But yeah, Herbert Burns, he sucks. Gilbert Burns, unfortunately, all the up, uh, all the athletic potential, all the skills went to that side of the family, all the heart, all the grit, uh, and all the quit went to the other side with Herbert Burns. Uh, but let's move on, though, to the next fight. Casey O'Neill versus Luana Santos. What's up, girl? Uh, no, uh, Luana Santos is fine. Uh, she's bad as fuck. Uh, I'll pick her to win because uh, I'm done picking Casey O'Neill in fights. She sucks. She's literally... Fun fact, I don't know this, of course, because I... Uh, purchased the product, I was told by a friend. Um, but Casey O'Neill actually apparently has a feet finder. Not even OnlyFans. I, I, I could like somewhat respect it if you have an OnlyFans. Like, that's like, I mean, you're still a degenerate, but at least you're like understanding that you're shit at fighting. So, like, yeah, I'll have an OnlyFans. But no, Casey O'Neill has a fucking feet finder. She sells feet picks online for money and people pay for it. Of course, I'm not one of them because Casey O'Neill's mid as fuck. Uh, but yeah, face looks retarded and her voice sounds terrible. Uh, couldn't date her. Just imagine hearing her speak. You'd be like, fuck off. Stay quiet. Um, but yeah, that's the official breakdown of that fight. Moving on. No, uh, I'll pick Luana Santos. She's been more, more active. She's looked better in her recent fights. Casey O'Neill, I picked against her against Jennifer Meyer because Meyer actually knows how to throw punches. O'Neill's shit. She arguably, not arguably lost, but she had a close fight with Roxanne Modafferi. Uh, lost to Lipsky. Lipsky's another uh, quite attractive female um, who I didn't think was that good. Luana Santos actually has submission potential, though, and Casey O'Neill's been subbed before. Lipsky subbed her. I reckon uh, Luana Santos can do the same. Get her down. Maybe O'Neill looks decent early. Maybe she has a big level up and wins in Australia. There is like a there is a part of me that just wants to pick all the Aussies, um, but I am going to pick a couple other non-Aussies. Santos is the favorite, though. Uh, she's stepping on short notice, but I'm not that worried. She fought in July. Uh, so this is only going to be like two months. No, not even two months. One month. It's going to be one month removed. So she stayed active, and it's not like she's having massive weight cuts. Women don't cut that much weight, apart from Kayla Harrison. Uh, so yeah, Luana Santos, I think she gets it done here, moves up the rankings. 
Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Josh Koulibau versus Ricardo Hamos. Uh, I'll pick Koulibau. He's the slight favorite for pretty good reason. Arguably could be a bit higher but I, of a favorite, but I guess they respect the finishing potential of Hamas. He's got multiple spinning elbow KOs. Uh, but Koulibau's not a chinny guy. He's got a pretty solid chin. He got dropped, I think, by Danny Silva in his last fight. But Danny Silva's pretty solid. And even that fight was actually pretty close. I picked Silva as the underdog, I think. Um, but no, Koulibau's solid. He's got solid grappling, I guess. He was kind of getting picked apart a bit by Melsic Bagdasarian for memory. But then uh, Bagdasarian tripped, or uh, slip, slipped over, ended up on the ground. He took the advantage, got the back, subbed him immediately. So he's got good potential. Um, Hamas has a tendency to leave himself open for submissions all the time. Shoots takedowns, uh, gets guillotined by Arosa. I think he got guillotined by Jordan as well. So yeah, back-to-back guillotine losses. And if you're back-to-back shooting yourself into guillotines and, and then tapping, not even going out, tapping... I just don't trust you. You're clearly not trying to fight that much. Uh, and you're also retarded because what kind of fight IQ do you have to shoot guillotines as a striker? Or to shoot takedowns as a striker and then end up getting guillotined? He's literally a striker. He's got good stand-up, right? He was doing okay against Jordan. He shoots a takedown gets subbed immediately. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to pick Koulibaly to be the more composed fighter also. I do think Hamas is going to be even less composed given that's like, oh, Australia is probably going to be getting booed. Uh... I reckon Koulibaly will start to gain some momentum. He's going to be like, fuck, panic, shoot, takedown. And then I I picked Koulibaly by decision, but I could see a finish, to be honest, because Hamas is retarded. Uh, so yeah, I'll go Koulibaly by decision, but a submission in like the second round wouldn't surprise me. Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got Volta Walker versus Junior Tafa. Two melting ice cream fucking physiques here. Uh, but... Volta Walker might have put the ice cream back in the freezer because the ice cream stopped melting. Because if you look at his Instagram, I'll chuck the pictures up now. Dude's lost some fucking weight. And I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, I'll pick Tafa to win by TKO. Uh, Volta Walker's going to stand and he's going to be retarded. And he might still stand and be retarded. But in his last fight against Bechki, he basically got takedowns whenever the fuck he wanted. But then was just so slow and oafy and plotty. Again, plotty man Walker, as Lucas Tracy would say. Rest in peace. I'm acting like he's dead um, on the feet. But then, like, he would take him down and he would just easily be way too strong for him. Tafa has been taken down a bunch. Tafa got wrestle fucked in the second and third by Mo Usman, who I don't think has actually taken anyone down um, in his other UFC fights. He just has shitty striking fights with them. Like, he got takedowns stuffed by other guys in the past. And he took down Tafa. He got wobbled bad in round one. So that's why I am. If Volta Walker stands with him, uh, he's going to get chinned because he's just so slow and Parker Porter-esque and Parker Porter got KO'd by him. So like I could see a highlight reel immediate finish where I just look dumb for picking Volta Walker. But look at those pictures on his Instagram. I put them up before. This dude's lost weight. He's locked in. Uh, I think he's actually going to come in not be completely retarded. Again, rig- if, if you're giving me a fat kind of striker that's somewhat athletic with power, but they're, they're fat versus just a fat fuck that's just fat. Like, I'll pick the guy that at least has some finishing potential. Um, but now Walker's actually um, looking in decent shape. I think this is a very Denise versus Carl Williams-esque matchup, to be honest, or very like Tafa versus Carl Williams-esque as well, where there's the wrestler just needs to just spam takedowns. And I could see this being a circumstance where Walker just goes, I... Fuck you, Australian crowd. I don't care that Junior Tafa is your guy and that you want him to get a finish. I'm just going to lay on them because Tafa has fucking zero get-ups. We saw it in his fight. I know it was short notice, but even like Dalima held him down easy, took him down. Uh, Usman took him down. The only fight where he's looked amazing was just the Parker Porter fight. But unfortunately, even though Parker Porter is the GOAT and Jones is ducking the rematch, uh, yeah, he didn't shoot the takedown. So I think Walker can take him down immediately easy. Um, and I don't think Tafa's gas tank is amazing, and his ability to get back up is just shocking. I don't think he's gotten back up from a takedown. Anytime you take him down, you hold him there for the rest of the round. I think maybe he got up like right at the end of the third with Mo Usman, um, and he lost that fight. It was close, arguably could have gone to him on damage, but I could see this just being a four and a half minutes of ground control time per round for Volta Walker, and then in that 30 seconds on the feet, Tafa does the only damage, so it's like, oh, it arguably should go to him, but the judges will just be like, okay, I can't score against four minutes of ground control time. So I will go with Volta Walker. This is the potential 
to just be the worst fucking pick ever. Like, it's like, even though the odds are 50-50, it's a coin flip on the odds, this is one of those fights where, like, Volta Walker could go out there and stand with Tafa for too long and just get KO'd immediately like uh, Justin Tafa did with Austin Lane. Um, and then I just like, why the fuck did I pick this dude? But he also could wrestle him and I look like a genius. So if he sticks to the game plan and isn't just a fat, plotty man, uh, then I'm going to go with uh, Volta Walker to get the win by decision. Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, Carlos Prates versus Li Jingliang. Uh, jingling, as Brendan Shaw would call him. I'm going to go with Carlos Bartes. I think he's just a way better striker, and I don't trust Li Jingliang coming back after being out for two years where he went to a decision with D-Rod. Although a robbery, uh, still a competitive fight with Daniel Rodriguez, which is just not the best look, to be honest, when D-Rod got finished by Magni. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with Bartes. He's on the up. Uh, look, if you look at his record, he's got some stinky losses on there, but I think that's a lot of regional fighters has some kind of stinky losses, and then at some point in their career, they kind of lock in. Prates has been on a win streak. Most of those losses are earlier on in his career. Um, and yeah, I do think he'll look real good here. He just he f- smoked Giles, looked all, like looked a bit iffy, was getting tagged a bit in round one, but like just smoked Radke. I think he's real good. His offense is great. Lee Jing Lang never been finished by strikes. I think Prates is going to be the first one to do it here. Maybe wins the decision. Dude's a cigarettes enthusiast, so maybe his cardio ain't the best. Uh, so if it gets extended, I could see Jing Liang having a good third round. Um, but I think Prates gets it done early. These fighting nerds guys are just getting better and better every fight. They're looking amazing. Uh, Baralio got a main event in a couple of weeks. Gene Silver said he's got fight news. He's real good. Uh, Mauricio hoofy has got real good striking. Like These guys strike differently. He's got a Muay Thai background. Decent jiu-jitsu base too. I don't think this fight ends up, I don't think this fight touches the ground, but on the feet still, I do think Prates is just way too good for Li Jing Liang. His distance control is great. Li Jing Liang's not the best at closing distance. He swings big, heavy shots a lot of the time. He's not some super, super technical striker. He's good and he's got some power, uh, but he's not like the most just incredible fluid striker to watch. I think Prates keeps his distance, goes in and out, tags Leech a bunch, cracks him with something big, maybe a body shot. To be honest, Li Jing Liang apparently recently had back surgery or some shit, he broke his back, uh, insert Mike Tyson, I broke my back, spinal, uh, that's the, that's Li Jing Liang, um, and unfortunately, I don't think the suit is going to be enough to save him, he might wear the suit to fight week, uh, but I don't think it's going to get him the win, Prates is going to be way too good, too good on the feet, too fast, too powerful, too precise, he's going to smoke Li Jing Liang, I feel, unfortunately, but I do like Prates, he's one of my favourite fighters, uh, I like all, a lot of the fighting nerds, guys, to be honest. Let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, Jarzinho Rosenstreich versus Tai Tuivasa, S-A-F-T-A. Uh, no, I'm picking Rosenstreich, bro. Tai's done. I think he's past washed. When we're, we're renaming him the dishes, bro. This man's washed. Uh, but, yeah, Rosenstreich's actually not bad. He beat the GOAT, Shamil Gaziev, of course. Fixed fight. Uh, fake result. CGI. Um, Gaziev never loses. But... No, I'm going to be picking, uh, I'll pick, what's his name, Rosenstrike. I think he's too good on the feet. Uh, I mean, I think he's just better everywhere, to be honest. Ty doesn't grapple ever. Uh, and I think Rosenstrike, his power's similar. Chin, I would have comfortably said was Ty. I think it's still probably Ty, but I would have comfortably said it was Ty. But recently, got finished by Garn, got smoked in a minute by, go- uh, by Pavlovich, and then got picked apart by Volkov and subbed on the ground. And then got subbed by Tabora, which is an awful look given that Tabora just lost in a minute and a half to Spivak. Uh, Rosenstrike's not bad. He's got a good jab. He's got some fundamental technique. Ty doesn't really have fundamental technique. He just swings heavy. That was enough to get him past like the Derek Lewis's and the Augusta Sakai's of the world. Uh, but not enough, I don't think, to get him past the decent strikers. And we've seen that. Garn, Pavlovich, Volkov, all good strikers. Um, picked him apart on the feet and smoked him. Uh, yeah, I think Rosenstrike's good. He's quicker, I do believe. And maybe Ty gets the win. I hope he gets it done. I'll be rooting for Ty. Is another one of those circumstances where I want my pick to be wrong. Uh, but I am going to go with uh, Rosenstrike to get the W. And that'll be five losses in a row for Ty to Iwasa, which is tough. Uh, but I think that's the reality that we're going to see. Um, crazy, this dude was the number three heavyweight in the world and knocked down Cyril Garn and was one big shot away from winning that fight and then fighting John Jones. Uh, crazy to think. 
Um, but let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got Gamrot versus Dan Hooker. I'm picking Scamrot. He should get the win here. Uh, he's a pretty big favorite for good reason. He's just way better in the wrestling and the grappling uh, than, uh, what's his name? Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker got subbed by Makachev, got taken down real easy. I don't think Hooker's, uh, I don't think Gamrot's as good as Islam all round, but his wrestling is fucking solid, bro. And he does have some submissions on the ground. Not as good as Islam, so maybe we don't see a submission here. I think Gamrot shows up a little bit and avoids getting finished. Or, oh, sorry, Dan Hooker shows up a bit, avoids getting finished. Uh, I was originally going to pick Gamrot by Kimura by like a round two or three submission. Um, maybe he gets him, like, gets him in a weird position on the ground and finds something. But I think Gamrot, I think Dan Hooker survives enough on the ground, on the feet. I'm going to go 29 28 because I think Dan Hooker is going to have a round where he cracks. Scamrot hooks, uh, drops him. You know, we're going to see Scamrot really enter his element and just spam takedowns for dear life uh, after getting hurt. Like, people forget, man, this guy got dropped by RDA. Uh, no, but like, he got dropped by RDA. Um, he gets dropped in a couple fights. Jalen Turner hit him a couple times. But yeah, he's good at, he's good at what he does and what he does is just spam takedowns. Uh, he scrambles for the legs. We call him Scamrot for a reason. Like, Bo, it's it's just Gamrot. What are you going to do? He's going to take you down a whole bunch. He's going to shoot takedowns. He's the Marab of lightweight. That's just what he is. Uh, and his striking is not even terrible either. So, like, I could weirdly see him just standing with Dan Hooker for, like, the first round. And then, like, or the third round after, like, a dominant first two just stands with Dan Hooker and actually looks solid. Like, I think if these two have a pure striking fight without the threat of the takedown, obviously Dan Hooker wins. But, like, Gamrot's not even bad at striking. He did kind of spin off Fazeev's head back a little bit. He did get dropped by RDA, which is a terrible look. But I think that's a lot of the time because he's, like, so focused on, I'm going to get takedown, I'm going to get the takedown. And then he kind of, it's like, fuck, I got dropped. And then he just gets the takedown. Uh, but that is still impressive that he's able to take people down easily while rocked competitive fight with Soyukin, has the win on paper, I think a lot of people think it was a robbery, but still, real competitive fight with Soyukin, uh, yeah, he's going to look better here, Gamrot, uh, Dan Hook, I don't think he shows up too well, um, was getting smoked by Jalen Turner until Turner just decided to be retarded, he needs to be cut from the sport, Jalen Turner, if you haven't watched my recent video, do it, um, but yeah, Gamrot, Scamrot, Spamrot, he'll enter his element, he'll get 27 takedowns at a fucking 12% accuracy, uh, and he'll get the win by 29-28 decision, I believe. Let's move on, though, to the co-main event. What it do, oh, said crew. Hey, man, listen. Uh, I'm winning this. No, uh, that's bedtime speaking, bro. I got him on the call. Uh, no, but uh, Urseg slash bedtime MMA is going to get the win, I believe, by decision. Um, yeah, I think he gets it done. He's better at striking, I believe. He's better at grappling, too. I, to be honest, I just don't see where Kaikara France gets it done over our boy Bedtime MMA. Bedtime's officially reached Crafty Vet status now that Lucas has dipped and Zabit maxed from the sport. Uh, I was going to do, like, a funny Lucas Tracy video, but I just can't be bothered. Um, Bedtime already kind of did, like, a little edit at the start of his recent video. Um, I don't quite have the connection to Flukas as he does, I think. I haven't done, like, the debate. I did not debate with him, but I haven't done, like, the streams and stuff with him. But anyway, to the actual fight, no, Urseg's just better, I do think. He's stayed more active. Kaikara France, um, I mean, robbery kind of against El Bazi should have won that fight. But, like, getting finished by Moreno, I mean, it was competitive, but still, I don't want you to get finished by Moreno. Uh, like, he just, even, like, Roy Val, like, like, he just doesn't look incredible in a lot of his fights. Like, apart from, like, Garbant cutting them to flyweight for whatever reason, where he KO'd him. That was the biggest fucking layup ever. Um, like, beat Askar Askarov, that was a wrestling-based fight. That's not going to really apply here. But, no, nah, I think Ersteg is just a more... I think he's clearly the best striker in the division. Um, you can base that off, like, Pantoj has fought literally all the best strikers at flyweight and um, been somewhat competitive with them. Dropped Moreno... Um, Roy Val wasn't able to really have him in that much trouble. I mean, he put some output out there in the fifth, but like, Ersteg genuinely cut this dude open, had him hurt, had him fucking like almost vomiting at the end of the rounds because he was that gassed. Like, Ersteg did a really good job. He's also got takedowns, he's got wrestling, uh, did well in the grappling against Alessandro Costa, but like, this dude's got a, a wide variety of strikes, he's got a good arsenal, uh, in his locker, he's got decent power. He's not some one-punch guy just because he KO'd Matt Schnell, but, like, Kai Kara France is not a one-punch guy just because he KO'd Garbant either. Um, and also, at least he needed... Like, Kai dropped Garbant, like, three times before finishing him. Urseg just colded Schnell immediately. 
Uh, so yeah, I think Kerstegg's even got the power advantage, more precise, better boxing. I could weirdly see Kai just fluking it a bit, uh, but I do, and it might be one of those weird circumstances where like the fighter like arguably wins the belt, uh, gets robbed, and then looks kind of mid in their next fight. But I don't think Kerstegg's that guy. I think Kerstegg stays focused. Um, I think he got he's motivated, got back in the gym, didn't wasn't too injured after the Pantoja fight. And yeah, I think it'll look great here. Should get the win by decision. Uh, let's move on, though, to the main event. I don't care where he's from, but I'll show him who he is. Botched. Whatever that means. Uh, I'm picking uh, Drinkers du Plessis, uh, the real African champion. Born in Africa, African bred, African raised, up, training out of Africa. And I'm going to be the first UFC champion to win a belt out of Africa. Uh, I can't really hit the Drinkers impression. But I thought that was all right. But anyway, I'm picking Mr. DDP. Uh, Mr. Goofball himself, bro, the weirdest fucking style that doesn't look like it should work ever, but it does. Uh, I think he's going to beat Jisrael, the dog bender, the puppy bender, last gyno bender. How many more nicknames you want me to come up with? i got plenty. Um, but no, I think he'll get it done. I think he's going to have to mix in the grappling, though. I think if this dude comes out there with the I'm going to outstrike you energy, you're going to get KO'd and he's just going to do a fucking Wakanda Forever celebration over your body and do some cringe shit. Like, it's going to be terrible if that happens. But if he's smart, and I think he is, I don't think Drick is retarded. He's he shot on um he shot on what's his name? Strickland. He took Whitaker down at the end of the first. Like he's not afraid to mix it in. He's not afraid to like he's not even a boring fighter. He's a very entertaining fighter. But like when I say be boring, I mean like just shoot takedowns. Like he's not afraid to just be a bit boring to um get it done to take the guy down, to take the path of least resistance. I don't think he's going to make it difficult for himself and stand with Jizzy. Uh, but if he does, I think it can't happen in the first couple. I think if he's going to stand with Izzy, it's going to have to be after a few dominant first rounds, first couple of rounds where he takes him down, beats him up on the ground, and then maybe stands with him. Izzy's a bit hesitant of the takedown, backing up a little bit, uh, and I think he gets it done. But yeah, like, I don't know. I know Vittori's got a granite chin, but like, are you telling me this guy's... I know sometimes he just levels up and randomly has a boob and shows up looking the best he's ever looked at 36, but, like, um, you're telling me the guy that had a boring fight with you, well, dead fight. You're telling me the guy that took Cannoneer and Vittori to a decision and looked terrible. The guy that won an arguable robbery against Whitaker, who's great, but, like, arguable robbery against Whitaker. The last time we saw Drickers fight Whitaker. I mean, he's only fought him once. He finished him in the second. Like, I've seen Drickus just look more impressive recently than Izzy. Apart from beating Alex Pereira, um, I just don't think Izzy's looked that impressive recently. Strickland walked him down, beat him up. And also, Pereira, that's like a pure kickboxing fight. Um, those two, they, they know what they're getting into there. They're, they're just going to strike and there's just openings. But like, when the real mixed martial arts setting... Also, Pereira took down Izzy in the first fight. <laughs> um... I don't know why I'm fucking coughing. Um, but Pereira took down Izzy in the first fight. I think Drake is going to be too big for him, too physical. Uh, and yeah, Izzy's takedown defense, it's solid. Um, maybe he just magically levels up and becomes a world-class grappler. But I don't know. I think Drickus is good enough to get him down, beat him up on the ground. He's going to be so much more physical than him, so much bigger. I know there's talk of Izzy's bulked up, bro, weighs 230. Um, yeah, that weight's just going to come right off. Like, that's all... Half of that's going to be fucking water weight. He's not going to be, like, cutting from, like, 220 here to 185. Like, this dude came in at, like, 200 pounds against Blovich. Um... Like, he's not a big guy naturally. He doesn't hold that much weight that well. And I think if he does come in big, it might not even help him. Like, that might gas him out. That might mean he's slower as well. Um, I think he like he came in deliberately a bit lighter against Blahovich to be a bit faster on the feet. And even then, that was up like 15 pounds, 10 pounds from his normal weight. And he still looked slower on the feet. He still looked a bit mid on the feet. And yeah, Blahovich is a big physical dude. Took Izzy down, held him there. I think Drickers can do the same thing. Drickers is a bit, like, rushing things. So I could see him, like, Izzy gets back up from a scramble because uh, Drickers rushes a position change or something. But I think if he just gets him and locks him into half guard, beats him up on the ground, I think he can get it done. Um, I'm going to go with submission. Uh, submission. Uh, I don't know. I think he can maybe wrap up, like, a DAS or something. The The method of victory call is extremely guessing. It could be a TKO on the ground with ground and pounds. Could be a decision if he just drags it out. But even, like... Izzy's never finished a single opponent in mixed martial arts uh, in the UFC outside of the first two rounds. If it goes into the third, fourth, or fifth, decision. He's just decision maxing. Uh, never gets a finish. That's a fact. Um, 
it goes into cruise mode Izzy, and I don't think you can cruise, even if he's winning the first couple, I don't think you can cruise mode Izzy against fucking, blo- against uh, Drickus, where he's real awkward and he can catch you, and he extends on punches, and unfortunately um, for Adesanya, Drickus is not just a bigger version of Simon. I know they fight similarly in terms of, like they're both a bit retarded, they both don't have the best fundamental technique, um, but Drickus does what Simon tries to do better. Like, he's just more effective at it. He doesn't... He also has a pretty solid chin, too. Uh, Izzy's definitely more precise than him, so could he just Strickland do what Strickland did in round one and do that for longer? Maybe. But I think Drickus can also cause him a couple problems on the feet, overextending, like, deliberately extending on some of his punches, and it just makes it a bit awkward for Izzy, who's never fought a style like this, uh, who went life and death with Gastelum. Um... Again, it's just unpredictable which is he's going to show up. You expect it to be a really good one. Uh, but even the time off, I don't know how much that's going to help him. Like, maybe he's refreshed. Maybe he's real good. He's had some time to do some cycles, you know, uh, bulk up. But no, I think Drick is going to get it done by grappling-based win, whether that be submission or ground and pound on the ground. Round three, I don't know. Maybe Izzy takes the first. Maybe drops Drick uh, to a knee or something like that. Uh, like having in this Whitaker, where he kind of drops him a bit off balance, bit of a big moment in round one. Drucker shoots, gets a takedown late round one. Round two, comes out heavy wrestling, gets him down. Round three, a little bit back and forth on the feet. Drucker might like hit Izzy with a big clubbing shot, and then he probably shoots the takedown, gets him down, beats him up. Submission attempt, either gets the sub or just gets him in a real dominant position, far side wrist control, starts whooping his ass with punches and gets a TKO, uh, and then Mark got us screaming, it's over, over, oh, oh my word, Bisping's going, I don't even know if he's commentating, but Bisping's going to just jump and go, oh my word, Izzy, he's still fighting back, he's in trouble though, um, but yeah, I think it'll be an impressive win for Drickus here, and he'll get another champion on his resume, Whitaker, Strickland already, might add Izzy to that resume, real good stuff from Drickus if he gets it done. Uh, but I'm, that's the card done. Those are my picks. Hope you guys enjoyed. No editing for this one. Again, let me know in the comments how you guys felt about the editing in the last video so we can make the uh, necessary adjustments. And how often do you guys want to see the kind of edited videos? Do you like them a lot? Do you want to see them not that often? Let me know. Uh, but yeah, peace out, guys. See you in the next one.